As a spiritual entrepreneur, how do you find ideal clients online, on social media, without the heavy marketing? We all know the marketing that feels like it's a hard work, it's a grind, it's a, it's a struggle. And how do we pick up clients and how do we have fun as a byproduct of just being ourselves in business? Well, these are the key questions that we're asking Christy Holt. She was brave enough to join a live coaching call and we went over all the questions, the key questions in her business so that she can start to find creative ways of building a client base. So while you watch this, feel free to ask yourself the same question because what you're gonna learn here is one, really how to be yourself in business and as a byproduct, reach all of the goals that you wanna create. Two, really how to overcome some impatience when it comes to uh, not sticking to the timeline that your mind really wants to see. And three, how to niche down so that your messaging is more compelling to your audience. So yes, it's here and in the Serving Circle, of course, on Facebook, where you help elevate consciousness through spiritual business success. So if you are a spiritual entrepreneur, be sure to subscribe, support the content, and I'll see you on Facebook in the Serving Circle, where you can start collaborating with your soul tribe. Let's dive in. Hello there, online family. Welcome back. Christy Holt is here. I got no clue where this is going to go. <laughs> Always an adventure. Always an adventure. Uh, but the, the, the topics here, I find are going to help everyone because everyone's generally asking, okay, how, well, how do I welcome in ideal clients, the people in my community that feel aligned, that are meant to work with me without the goddamn hustle, heavy marketing, you know, how can it feel aligned? How can it feel in flow? How can it feel more integrated with just who, who and what I am? Yeah. Right. And so with, I think everyone's sort of asking themselves that same thing. If they can, if they can operate in a business where they feel they're just being them, where they show up every day and they're just them in their marketing, in their, in their collaborations, in their networking calls, and they're just being them. My question would be, is there any resistance there? How can you have resistance with just being you? But if just being you feel so aligned and feel so light and feel so authentic and genuine, and as a byproduct, you're collecting more and more clients because you're being you, I find that's where everyone's trying to get to. And that's where we're trying to mold our marketing, mold our messaging, mold our content in a way where there's just more of that. Definitely. I think it's really interesting because there is resistance. Most of us have some sort of resistance. It's a safety mechanism though, right? Mm -hmm. To keep us kind of playing small and not risk stepping into, stepping into the unknown, maybe stepping into those fears. What if, what if somebody doesn't like us? We get so stuck in those, mm -hmm. like, I uh, definitely recovered people pleaser definitely those, those, uh, scripts run heavy and stop us from actually stepping into what actually feels aligned, what feels light, what feels like flow and simplicity and ease. Mm -hmm. But we seem to, we seem to keep ourselves often stuck in those patterns that are keeping us away from that, which we want, but in our comfort zone, cause it's like safe and familiar. Yeah. So Chrissy, you're in the right space. Cause that's exactly what we're going to talk about. And exactly what we're going to bring up but before we do um i'd love to just learn a little bit more about you give the audience a little bit of an understanding about what you do how you do it you know all of all of those good things and then we can dive into some some things that are either challenges you're running up against or roadblocks holding you back from experiencing what you what you're going to experience but let me read out this really short one sentence by that you sent me just so people can understand a little bit of understanding. So, uh, so Christy is a happiness coach, helps women go from unstuck and overwhelmed to balanced and confident by self-love and the acceptance journey. So in doing all of this, what, what is it that you describe you're working at right now on in your business? So what are you working on right now in your business? 
and what are the sort of challenges that you're running up against? If you can give us that sort of understanding, I think that'd be a good start. <clears throat> so like you mentioned, I call myself a happiness coach. And I think there's a lot of different opinions on what happiness means. So I kind of want to just back up the bus and explain that just really briefly, because I believe that happiness is actually a choice in the moment to choose to move towards what is aligned and what feels good for you instead of choosing suffering, because we generally have an opportunity to choose one or the other in every single moment. And it's, it's very easy in life to get sucked down into those patterns of suffering and attracting more and accepting more of that and building our identity even at, at times onto that. So how do we move a little bit more away from that stuck, a, a kind of addicted to suffering and it's because it's normal and how do we shift into ease and flow and creating a life that we actually freaking feel amazing about that when we get up in the morning is like, oh, I get to live today and shifting that perspective. So to me, it's becoming aware of that option to choose to the ability that we have actually to become the alchemist in our life, to create whatever it is that we desire. We can do that through our, our thoughts and our emotions and by bringing that into our, you know, consciousness, being aware that we can do that allows us that opportunity to choose. So yeah, I really have a, a huge heart to help people who are you know, I think that a lot of times they might not even necessarily recognize themselves as stuck. How this kind of presents often is life doesn't feel really great to them. They're not sure what's missing, but it's not really feeling fulfilling. They're not really feeling happy. They have a lot of circumstances serving to keep them where they're at instead of embracing the possibilities and opportunities beyond that comfort zone they're just kind of living status quo, content in their safe zone instead of pushing it, but they feel like there's something missing. So that's the kind of the people that I really like, oh, I just really have such a huge heart to help them go from it could be worse uh -huh. to never fucking better, right? Mm -hmm. Best day of my life. Every single day I get to live this life and experience all of what life has uh, to offer me and to create whatever it is that my heart desires. So uh, I kind of, you know, design, design my program out of that. It's out of my own journey as well, which is how all, a lot of these things kind of come to be, right? Is my own journey of moving from stuck and dreading each day and not feeling fulfilled. And yeah, admittedly, choosing some suffering, ultimately, not intentionally. No one goes around and is like, I would like this suffering, please. Uh, but we get so stuck in it, it feels normal to us. So helping illuminate that issue so that people become aware of it and realize that they can actually move away from that and create the things that they want. So out of my own life, my own story, that's a long kind of, a kind of involved story, but you know, I've done the corporate world thing for a while. It totally wasn't for me. I learned a big lesson there. Now I, I work for myself. That is absolutely my zone of genius. I came out of a, a difficult relationship you know, I can't even blame, I can't even blame him because I know I wasn't totally, uh, you know, the best version of myself in that relationship either. We both had lessons to learn. I started learning some lessons, maybe a little ahead of him. And that ended up in us kind of going separate ways. That was probably what's best for both of us. But I am so grateful for that and for all the lessons that it did give me. It put me where I am today. I'm super grateful for my family. I'm super grateful for those very tough lessons and those very difficult decisions that I made that allowed me to start learning more about who I am and to be able to share that with other people and impact other people's lives. And in order to, you know, eventually change the world, like that's the, that's the grand idea to collaborate, to help more people realize the power that they actually have in their life get that message out there and change the world one person at a time. So that's kind of what drove me to where I am today in a Cole's notes, too long, didn't read sort okay. of version. <laughs> well, I think, I think it's a good highlight here that if you help, if you have the mission purpose to help people who are sort of finding that, you know, breaking free that status quo and yeah. breaking free of some patterns that they, they may unconsciously be choosing that's keeping them small and living 
just that fucking incredible life. Yeah. That's, that's what you're doing. And that's, that's, yeah. that's why you're here. And that's what you're looking to discover in your business as well. So I love people who have that mission to serve uh, and create a life for people are also doing it for themselves. Not to say that your life needs to be like that every time or all the time, but the fact you're consciously making the decision to make that happen for your business is it puts you in that state of congruency and integrity that you can coach from that place and help people yeah. do that in other areas of their life as well. Right. And like, it's really just honestly, life is so good from here. I can't not share that with people, right? I want to inspire people with, with the grand hope of empowering them mm -hmm. to go after whatever it is for them. And it's not about me telling them what that is or me giving them the answers because listen, we're all just humans. We're all in this journey doing our thing, but that's where like my magic is. I like really good at helping people figure out what that looks like. And sometimes it's a bit of an unpackaging process, as you know, as a coach, sometimes those layers really can run deep, but once you kind of get underneath it and can figure out what it is that this person is passionate about, man, their entire world of possibility opens up. And how could I not want that for as many people as I possibly can touch? Like, yeah, I really want to change the world. So Exactly. So let's, let's dive into what your business currently looks like. So what are you currently working on in terms of your marketing, you know, your day-to-day -day efforts so yeah. that you can attract these, attract these ideal clients. What is it that you're doing at the moment in the form of, in the form of marketing? Well, it's really interesting in 2021, I, I was working with a coach and it's funny how this kind of works out. I think <laughs> is that I went in with one, one kind of goal. And it honestly, the goal I went in with was I need to figure out what I'm doing with my social media content strategy. I was like, I feel like a, like I'm wandering around in the dark, trying to like, I don't know, lob things at a target that I don't know where the target is. And so as a result, I went in asking for, for this thing, but I actually came out with an entirely different clarity around my program, because obviously if I wasn't really clear about my offer and what exactly my strategy for doing so is, I mean, there's a bit of magic on the back end, you know, how it is intuitive coaching, but you know, to be able to at least put down and say, this is, this is kind of the product, you know, on a surface level, at least, and to explain that. So what ended up happening was I ended up having a safety net of content strategy that I no longer require because all of it flowed out of me. And now I feel actually completely safe in this intuitive space to share whatever I'm feeling <laughs> led to share in a moment or in a day or, 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 or just whatever is kind of on my heart and a message that I feel is needed to be heard. So I have a strategy now <laughs> that I'm like, yeah, don't need it. I'm just going to live in this intuitive space. So that's but, what you're doing at the moment. You, what you're doing at the moment is more content that's flowing through you from an intuitive space. The the yeah. message you feel needs to needs to be heard at the moment, and that sort of is that is that that's almost what's leading you and what's guiding you to your mar with your marketing. Yes, yeah, I would definitely say, and and just also like connecting with people, building relationships with people. Like that's probably. I honestly know this about myself that I love conversation. Like that is totally my jam. I am one-to-one -one baby. I'm like in it, like, let's go deep. Let's have those difficult conversations. Let's, let's dredge up the stuff that you don't really want to dredge up. Let's get the tissues. Let's go all in. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's where it's like my zone. I love like the conversation. So I love I love podcasting. I love conversations. I love having a zoom call. I love working with my clients. I love conversation of any sort. So kind of down my pipeline is definitely a podcast. I would, yep. I really feel called that at some point that is it's in my queue, you know, it's not at the, it's not the first spot in my queue. And I, I leave it open to know there might be something even greater that might come ahead of that. I don't know yet. Um, out of that strangely enough, my safety net content strategy plan really actually came a complete outline for a book. <laughs> and so I went in to get like a strategy of what I'm supposed to post on social media every day. And I came out with a book outline. Funny how that works. It's not what I wanted, but it's definitely what I needed. I have wanted to write a book for the last, I don't 20 years, 
more, I don't know, forever. I have more or less always felt like I have a book in me to write. And until just the end of 2021, I was like, I don't know what it's about. <laughs> like, I don't know what it is yet. So I knew there was like someday and I was just waiting for that inspiration to be like, here's your book. And then I was sitting there and I'm looking at this outline. I'm like, well, there's my book. Mm -hmm. So I've been working on writing a book. That's kind of my current focus right now. The podcast is definitely like, I am loving getting on people's podcasts as guests right now, because I so my jam, I absolutely freaking love it. I love having conversations. Um, and it's good practice and it's good developing those skills for that, which I want to do down the road. But yeah, my book right now is sort of my priority. And this book, people are, talk to a lot of people about it. They're like, what's it about? And I'm like, okay, well, like, I really need to narrow down how exactly I'm going to explain it. But in a nutshell, it's about getting unstuck. It's about getting from that place where you're like, just not living life to the fullest. Maybe you don't even know. You don't know what you don't know, but you're in this space of not feeling like, or maybe you're in the space, I guess, more of feeling like, is this all there is? Like, is there something more? I feel like there's something missing. And to take people from that space to, to open their eyes to the, the entire world of possibility. And so the book is really sort of a journey. Again, like you said, in my little short bio thing, to go from stuck and overwhelmed to feel balanced and confident. It's a journey of learning how to love and accept yourself of giving yourself all of those things that you've spent your entire life searching everywhere, high and low for that was always within you to just give to yourself in the first place. So it's a lot about love. It's a lot about taking back your power. It's a lot about learning about yourself, peeling back the onion, going from stuck and like really leaning into who you really are. So, all right, cool. Let I'm excited. Let me ask some questions here. This is awesome. When, whenever I'm sort of gauging on what someone can do moving forward in the form of social media or in the form of marketing, in the form of attracting ideal clients, I ask myself a couple of questions. Besides the vibration side of things, which we'll get to in a minute. Yeah. The business side of things. So I look at the, I look at the, the vibrational, spiritual, what needs to be healed side of things. Then I look at the marketing, then I look at the, the business, the marketing, the messaging, you know, are you accessing your zone of genius? And then we combine the two and we sort yeah. of say, so that's, that's where the, the integration of both spirit and business really elevates each other. Yeah. We're going to dive into the spiritual side in a minute and the emotional side in a minute, some questions around the business since we're on this topic. Yeah. One, um, are you currently, ha is your reach currently, is your marketing currently reaching enough people to which you can have a consistent flow of leads that lead to clients? I would say not quite where I would like it to be. I'm sort of in this interesting space right now where I really actually want to focus on getting the book done. I'm like, wheels are turning. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I really want to focus there I'm kind of hoping on the back end to sort of at least maintain uh, social media presence. Okay. No, it doesn't like, I don't know. The algorithm seems to be like this one's a go and this one's a not. It's a little unpredictable. It seems like, I don't know, like depending on the day and time uh, I, I could have one person like it or see it and another day in time like it's hard to know like is it the yes. algorithm is it the time like i don't know it's just okay. kind of feels like a bit of a crapshoot but um at the same time i really do want space to finish this book so i'm kind of like i want more people coming in but just not yet okay no i do i just have a limited capacity and i'm very cool. aware of maintaining that limited capacity this I have is where we can be this is where we can be resourceful we can be creative because you can stick to your this is what i find about being in flow when you're when you're just you content flows through you as you've yeah. as you've explained yeah but while you're doing the book what if you could spend time doing the book and as a byproduct that also be some content yeah and right? it definitely has turned out to be that way because in reality, I absolutely love writing and I have been writing content for social media on all of these topics 
for some time. So it actually turns out that I have lots of content that sort of already was available for me to start the framework for my book, right? I've written a post on these different subjects that I want to en encompass in the book. So it definitely is kind of flowing out that way where, and yeah, I totally like, I'm kind of guessing that you're getting that, like, maybe I should write about my writing process and that kind of back end, like show people who I am and what my experience is. And I've done less of that, but I've really share a lot of those thoughts. Lots of those things that are going in my book, I share freely on social media. I think it's really freaking important mm -hmm. to get that message out there. And I, I don't want to wait until I have the book to tell and share and, and change people's lives. I want to change people's lives now. Beautiful. My vision with the book is just to, I'm like, I, I'm <clears throat> super divey in the one-to-one, -one, but I can't reach that many people one-to-one. -one. Like there's only so much time and so much energy and all of these things. So I really want to help more people. Thus, that's the direction of the books that can really just reach more people and share yeah. that message on a wider scale. I gotcha. I gotcha. So when it comes to the book, that's what feels most exciting. Is that what feels most exciting? Does that feel like, cause I always ask everyone and everyone listening can ask themselves this. I feel we're always called to something. Doesn't necessarily need to be action. You can be called to meditate. You can be called to take, take a freaking nap for God's sake. But I love both of those things. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But I feel we're always called to something. We're, we always, we always go through a period where we feel like there's a leap that needs to happen a leap that feels like to our heart, to our soul and spirit, that it's scary, it's unknown, yeah. but it's expansive and exciting. There's I always do that. I definitely feel that way about the book. And yes. like, it is scary because I definitely like, now I'm very aware because I'm like very like, an, uh, very much coach in the like awareness kind yeah. of space. So I like watch myself thinking these things and I watch the thoughts go by that are like, you don't have anything important to say. And I'm mm -hmm. like, that's not true. Yes. Right. I watch these thoughts. I watch these emotions come up and I'm like, mm, like, nope, nope. That's not, that's not where we're going. Okay. We're going to write this book because it's going to change lives. And I'm just going to ignore all those yeah. things, but it is scary because those thoughts come in and actually a lot of like what I find, what I find people out there in the world and clients that I'm working with friends that I talk to, they don't actually realize that they don't have to take those thoughts. Mm. They don't realize that they can change them. Beautiful. Plug different awesome. ones in there. So yeah, I'm really excited about the book and I absolutely love working with my clients too, but I just feel like I want more magnitude. Okay. Okay. So the magnitude comes from the book and the book takes some time. The book takes some effort. The book takes some attention and you and and what needs to happen is okay let's tune in and feel what is in my best what's in my what what time delegation is in my highest yeah what time delegation is in my highest for me to do what feels on purpose and that's something we can tune into when we start with the vibrational stuff so it seems like the marketing you're putting your you're putting your your messaging and everything together um, when it comes to your zone of genius, you've highlighted it's conversations. It's, oh my God, just yeah. getting conversations, guests on podcasts. You can see your own podcast in the future, just getting on client calls, doing all these different things. Now, this is a, this is also me. I love conversations, hence this podcast, hence the collaborative calls, everything that I'm doing. Yeah. I just love getting on zoom. I do my, my client calls, uh, group calls twice a week and they go for hours and there's, I just love it. I love it. Yeah. And it's, and that this is what we really want to think about when you say, how can I be more me? How yeah. can more of me flow through so that I feel myself? And also as a byproduct of that, I'm serving clients and I'm generating more leads and I'm making more of an impact. Yeah. Now that's cool because what feels like a flow for you is, is conversations. You also highlighted earlier before this, that you love writing or that, it, you know, it, it, you do, you do enjoy writing. So that's hence the book. Um, so a couple questions here. Yeah. One, you'd like to have more reach. Where are you currently doing the reach? You, you, your book is sort of like your investment. So like you're building that book for the magnitude. Yeah. 
right? So a, a, a percentage yeah. of your attention and energy is going to go towards that. If that's your flow, your creativity, what platforms, what platforms are you on right now to generate those conversations, those, those leads that impact um, everything like that? Well, honestly, I am on like most of the platforms, uh, but my heart, I think is mostly on Facebook and cool. I have a few reasons for that. Like I'm on Instagram and I share my things to Instagram, but I'm a writer. I'm mm. not a filtered photo kind of gal. You are not going, you are going to find mountain adventure photos from me on Instagram. Those do all right. But people on Instagram are like, mm, not filtered enough, uh, yeah. to real life, you know, like that's, I just feel almost out of place being a real authentic human on Instagram. It's probably my perception of it. But that's okay. I just feel like it's not my my favorite zone. I really love connecting with people and seeing what they're what they're about, building relationships and doing all those things just feels easier for me in Facebook. Mm -hmm. I'm on I'm on the other stuff too. I like have a pretty decent following on TikTok, but I have a love-hate relationship with it. Sometimes it feels good, sometimes it feels like a massive stressy burden. And so I just I just flow with it. If it flows. I have an idea to do something and I deem that idea worth doing, then I'll, I'll, I'll flow with it. But okay, great. otherwise I just, I'm kind of like embracing the permission to just show up where I feel best and great. when I feel best and just live in that space. Awesome. Perfect. So these are the couple of questions are, uh, that we need to highlight what feels like your zone of genius, where you're hanging out, like what's the, what are the platforms you're on? Yeah. Next questions are around your messaging, because what we really want to highlight is what's, what can you stick to that's in your zone of genius? So you're in flow, create something for a particular niche that they are already desiring. Yeah. So that they're, so that you're attracting those ideal clients by being just you. And then also they're getting the value that they need. Yeah. While they're getting the value they need, it also builds demand and desire for your offer. Yeah. That's, that's a cool, sweet spot. So for example, um, the reason why I created the serving circle and the reason why we do collaborative calls, that's a business owner's love. So my heart, I wake up each day and I'm like, how may I serve? How can I serve this community, pour my heart into them? And just as a byproduct of that, it expands. Yeah. And that's what I find a lot of people can start creating using the resourcefulness uh, of the platforms online. Yeah. So we, there's only a couple of things we can highlight here, you know, with the time that we have, but what we'll do is we'll create uh, some questions for yourself to think it really think about so that moving forward, you can just gain more and more clarity on that. Yeah. So understanding the niche understanding just to just as a thought experiment or just as a little bit of a you know just to open up some options if you're helping people who are in a mundane life who are pretty stuck in the you know cultural norms and the status quo Maybe they're not society. quite they're not they're not quite living the best life possible yeah as an example as a bit of a thought experiment let's say you need to choose anything but who could be that specific person? Could it be someone who's married, a, you know, a woman who's just doesn't know what to do with their life? Could it be someone who just left a job? Could it be uh, someone just coming out of school? What do you feel? Is there anything you feel called to that could that could match that sp that specific person? I guess like my heart tells me that I really like just really want to reach the the mom who has put everything into her family and left herself last. So her relationship right. is suffering. She's probably struggling with parenting because it's hella hard. Um, she doesn't know what her purpose is. She's lost who she knew herself to be before children because everything got turned upside down. So I guess that's where my heart is. And the, these, cool. these people that are in these, maybe they're not they're not totally happy, but they're also kind of resigned to the fact that life involves some suffering. And this is just, you know, like they're kind of committed to almost staying in that almost like a martyr position, right? Where it's like the family comes first, I come last. That's just the way it is. 
Right. And I want them to see that if they put themselves first, they actually bring everybody else up. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So now it, even just with that, you've just highlighted a specific person. Well, you got more specific on a person, which is a mum. Yeah. Who's put everyone else first, put her own desires aside. And now she's like, who am I? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So if they, if that's a particular person, they're not going to necessarily describe their problem as, oh my God, I don't have much self-love. Right. Right. They're not going to say, oh my God, the solution is just to, for me to have more acceptance. Yeah. They're probably going to be like, oh my God, overwhelm. Yeah. They're probably going to be thinking something along the lines of, oh my God, I don't know what to do with my life moving forward. They're probably, they might be thinking, is this what it's going to be for the next 10 years? Yeah. Am I going to have to wait for my kids to graduate uh, university or college in, in, you know, 15 years for me to finally do what I want to do? Yeah. You know, is my, is, is my life just basically serving my husband while he goes out and does what he wants and I'm just sit here unfulfilled. Yeah. Like they're, they're thinking about these things and this is what you can highlight now in describing the problem that they really, in, in the way that they're describing it and then create a solution and a transformation that is the way that they're, what they're asking for. So for example, yeah. if you have a platform or a program, or if you have a, you know, weekly zoom calls or a community, whatever you want to create that helps mums find their passion or develop, develop a passionate hobby that allows yeah. them to thrive, right. Or something like that, all of a sudden they're going to start to, if, if that's already what they're asking for and they come across a community or a group or a podcast or a book or whatever that says helping helping mums you know helping mums in the mundane to find their heartfelt hobby yeah all of a sudden they're like oh my god this is what i'm after and what if in serving them in that way you do it through conversation you just yeah. jump on calls with this community of women as a byproduct of you being in your zone of genius giving them value they're like oh my god maybe i can do this this and this and maybe I can start realizing that when I stick to my heartfelt hobby, my family benefits, yeah. everything else starts to benefit. And then that becomes your marketing, that becomes your message, that becomes something that other people invite other people. And then all of a sudden you're rocking and rolling with a system. Yeah. And I really would like to ideally call in other moms or women that share a similar mission to my own, because I know that when they when they get there, like I, I started as a health coach. So I had lots of people that came to me wanting weight loss and listen, I know it's not about the weight loss. Let's dive into what it's really about when they get past, you know, that we discover there's something that really lights them up mm -hmm. when they get into that zone of what lights them up. Now I know they're, they're in a space to change the world too. And I like, I just think there's so much power in that. So that's kind of like, the community I want to cultivate is, cool. is not just women that are going to sort their own stuff, but women that actually want to go beyond that and really like join the, the, join the movement, join the collective, you know, in this uprising against being boring and mundane and just yeah. going through life suffering, but to create, you know, a, a ripple, a ripple effect of change. Beautiful, beautiful. So not to say that this is your niche, but this is an example of just by asking some simple questions and coming up with ideas, how much yeah. this starts to unfold. Yeah. I, I, um, I, I use the analogy of, of Sudoku. Have you done Sudoku, Sudoku puzzles? Yes. So it's like where, what we came up with right now is just some ideas around your niche. So the person, the problem that they have and the outcome transformation that they want by yeah. filling out, like in Sudoku, when you fill out pieces of the square, all other pieces of the square start really filling in, in itself. Yeah. So let's say, for example, you have mundane mums is this is the sort of the niche. So mums, they're no longer finding satisfaction, fulfillment in their life. Yeah. You have the problem. So the problem is they're overwhelmed. They're bored. They don't know what to do with their life. 
And the outcome transformation is they want to have a passionate hobby that's going to light them up. Something like that. All of a sudden, you know exactly where to go for market research. You know exactly what podcast to jump on. You know exactly who to talk to, who's your ideal client and who's not. Right? You know exactly the type of, you can think about the particular messaging you can put through your content. And then you can weave in the value as well as demand and desire for your offer, which may be a program, a book, a jump into my you know, webinar or whatever it may be because you've started the foundation of your messaging. Yeah. Now this is once again, just an example. Yeah. Um, in putting all of this together, do you feel a little bit more clarity with questions you can ask yourself that may be, that may allow a more compelling message for an audience? Yeah, I mean, it's generally, it's generally my intention to make people feel seen and heard. So I try to carry that with me into my message. And, you know, I think that is the, I think that's one of the biggest things that people really want in life is to be seen and heard and accepted and loved. Like it's all kind of, to me, comes under the umbrella of, of actually being, feeling loved Mm -hmm. encompasses the opportunity to be vulnerable, be seen and be heard and be met where they're at. So I do really try and strategically, you know, try and meet them where they are because it's actually not a reach for me because I was there too. And I I've experienced that. And I remember just feeling like, is that all there is? Yes. Like, can I hang on for this, in this marriage for 10 more years? Like, and do I want to do that? Do I want to hang in there? And what will be left in 10 years? Because I don't know who I am anymore. I have all these experiences myself. So I'm able to relate, I guess, on, on that particular example. Could you imagine jumping on a Zoom call where women do not feel seen and heard and loved in their life? They jump on a Zoom call with 5, 10, 15, 20, 50 women, however many, and they're just sharing, being led by you and just finally feeling seen. Finally, someone asks them, hey, what do you want to do? Hey, what is your heart calling you towards? And they feel so seen. They feel so loved. They feel so uh, validated where they have now have the courage to do what their heart's calling them to their spiritual journey. Yeah. That, I think that like, like? I would say that that feels amazing. I guess my, the tiny bit of resistance that I feel coming up actually tells me that people are more, that that requires a great deal of vulnerability. And I feel like that's more of a one-to-one, -one, which is totally inside my, my zone anyways. But um, yeah, I love, I love clients standing up and realizing cool. they, they do have a heart's desire and it's okay. And it's better than okay. It's actually put there for a reason. Yeah. Like you were meant to come here and do that thing that actually lights you up and your, your whole body, your whole experience is just a whole bunch of signals pointing you to that thing that makes you feel so great every day and have the best yeah. day ever. Awesome. So this is an awesome question. If this feels exciting to you, if this feels like a leap and expansion to do the book, yeah, to help women in this way, once again, this isn't, this isn't need to be narrowed down right now, but just to be more specific and be more tangible with the outcomes and transformations you can help people with, and then mm -hmm. building your marketing around your zone of genius and serving this particular niche in moving forward with all of that, if that's your exciting unknown leap that your heart's guiding you to what do you think your mind fears most what do you think your mind fears in terms of fears judgments insecurities resistance what do you think that may be um i think for me the biggest challenge that i'm always kind of working to overcome is sort of and it's kind of like uncertainty and impatience. Mm. And it's kind of like waiting for, uh, like just having the patience that things play out in the right timing and not, not wanting to like control it. Because I know that actually, if I try and control it, I keep my results very small and very in the, in the known comfort zone. 
And I actually want results that are far outside of that. So yes. I know that I need to break through like, oh, I love it. So like coach myself a little bit here. Um, as we do, right. We like, like, I'm having this, this struggle. And like, I'm just very aware of, of where, of, aware of that, that I need to like push myself outside of that and think mm -hmm. beyond that. But I would say that's probably my biggest thing is just maybe like think, feeling right. a bit impatient. Like, I want to make a big impact and I want to make it now. Yes. And like, it doesn't always quite work out that way. This so is the, this is the paradox by yeah. wanting by, cause you're heightening your level of vibration. You're heightening your level of consciousness as you follow this journey. It may yeah. have been in your expansion at one point to intend something and then it manifests. Yeah. You're now reaching a level of consciousness. That's a lot higher where you're, you're ready to learn some deeper lessons. Yeah. And the deeper lessons may be, that if you're attached to an outcome it's now not in your expansion to receive it yeah i know that's so and annoying right like i know life <laughs> come on life sort yourself out yeah but you, you can imagine this i i use the analogy of a, a, a three-year-old if you ask a three-year-old what they want for uh for breakfast they'll say ice cream and then lunch they'll say ice cream and that that they just they always want ice cream. That's just what they want. And sometimes we can reach a level of consciousness. We're just asking for the ice cream, and we're being called to now become the adult that says, "Hey, maybe what our mind wants isn't exactly what yeah. we need right now." Yeah. And so as you start to heal these these fears of the unknown and welcoming in a level of result that your mind's not comfortable with, this is the lesson you need. So in order, yeah. this is the way I would summarize it. In order to welcome in a result that's bigger than what your mind can see, the mind needs to be healed. The patterns of the mind need to be healed. The, the mind wants a particular result because the mind thinks if I get that result, I'll feel a certain way. I'll be yeah. more loved. I'll be validated. I'll be enough. I'll be safe. And therefore going after that result from this vibration is no longer in your expansion. It's the child asking for the ice cream. Yeah. Right. Can you feel that intuitively? Totally. Yep. So what would be in your expansion right now? My guess, we could do some more work around this, but my guess is that if you breathe, if you, if you just, if you meditate, if you welcome in your deepest fear and the vibration, and you allow the insecurities, the fears and everything to be there, that pattern starts to heal. So yeah. the deepest fear right now, let's say you do welcome in a result that's like, holy shit, a result <laughs> that's like outside my control. Like I can't handle this. Yeah. Let's say you welcome in 20 new clients right now that are ideal clients and you welcome in a level of income that your mind's freaking out about. Yeah. Let me ask you. What does that feel like in your body? If you imagine welcoming in, like if 20 clients right now say, Hey, I'm ready to send you money, but this link's not working. <laughs> and like, I'm trying to send you, I'm trying to send you this $500,000. And this other person's like, I'll send you 1.2 million. And you're just, and you like, you're like, holy shit. What, <laughs> what does that feel like in your body? Uh, I really vacillated there because I got really excited when you talk about people sending me big sums of money that like that actually really evokes like an excited response in yeah. me. Uh, but before that, uh, definitely like a, like a heavy feeling in my stomach. Like, I hope I can measure up to this yes. demand. I hope that my energy can match what it needs to be like okay, something great. in that space. Yeah. Okay, great. So this is what we need. To, so this is what Send life. Me this is what you're sort of, this is what your soul's guiding you towards. This is what life is guiding you towards for you to become more empowered, for you yeah. to become more empowered, for you to take back your life force and your soul's energy that's currently been leaking in the, towards the energy signature of, can I measure up? Can I actually be good enough here? Can I actually do this? Now, wouldn't it make sense if you're being called to become more whole within yourself, more healed, more enlightened, wouldn't it make sense for life not to give you the result <laughs> that pushes that lesson down? Yep. Because if you achieve that outcome that your mind wants, 
and as a byproduct of that push down the lesson that you know you need to learn in order to become more whole wouldn't it make sense that life says hey you're not ready for that yet what you're ready for is to purge and heal this pattern that says my worthiness is dependent upon my outcomes yeah and then as a byproduct of you becoming more healed more whole what happens is you start to vibrationally welcome in something that's bigger than what your mind can see yeah right it's almost like an experience that mm. like when i'm not looking for stuff things miraculously show up like yes. my partner i was not looking yeah. he is way beyond what i could have imagined an ideal partner would be so mm -hmm. i know how this works you know what i mean on a logical not logical i know how it works i've seen it work mm -hmm. <laughs> i've experienced it yeah so my question here is do you have a meditation practice or some sort of spiritual practice to welcome in emotions to hold space for them to you know heal do you have that sort of thing in your life right now yeah okay great what does that look like uh i love meditating i i do several meditations a day i i definitely i have one that i do like a regular a regular one that's my routine but other than that like i like to kind of mix it up and try different things you know, just what I'm kind of feeling intuitively called to do in a certain day. Maybe it's a energy kind of thing, or maybe it's a heart coherence kind of thing. I kind of just go with nice. the flow. Awesome. Awesome. So my, um, my recommendation is what, this is what I do. And this is what I encourage on my clients. And I've just seen so many just incredible transformations in sitting in silence welcoming in this specific feeling this heaviness or emptiness in your stomach or whatever it may be holding space for it because our soul expands through contrast through experience through feeling through observation so as you experience this vibration this this sensation in your stomach what's happening is you're holding a loving safe space for the side of you who fears that outcome Another yeah. way of saying that is, as you hold this in your, in your, in your body without judgment, and without resistance, you're starting to heal the very pattern that wants to stay inside a small story, that wants yeah. to stay inside a comfort zone that says, this is what we do to feel safe. Therefore, if we achieve that outcome, we're not going to be safe. We're finally, we're embracing, we're, we're opening up ourselves and our insecurities to finally not be enough. So we might as well only welcome in something that's this result so we can still feel good still be attached to it yet yeah. not risk our biggest fear of not being enough or loved yeah that's what you heal that's the pattern that you heal as you feel it in your body without resistance without judgment i actually love tapping cool. for that too because it's a super fun way of like i've honestly been uh I've done somewhere I've ended up just laughing because sometimes when you say these fears out loud, you realize that's your own ridiculous mind doing its thing. And it's like, that's not doing what I thought it mm -hmm. was doing when you say it out loud. So that's kind of a fun way of releasing that. So yeah, I, I like that suggestion. It's a really good suggestion to just, you know, it's slightly different take on like tapping is much more active and much more like almost almost trying to suck all of those bits out and out into the open yeah. whereas the sitting with it is just a little bit more more peaceful allowing yeah cool so i i'm happy to send you this recording okay and ask yourself these questions ask yourself the question of what do i need to feel and heal mm -hmm. to welcome in a new vibration that's going to welcome in whatever i need whatever's in my highest. So I could, the, the spirit in business course, the, the complimentary course that people get when they join the serving circle, um, the spirit in business for anyone who's listening is in the welcome pack. It walks you through these steps of how to feel and heal all of these insecurities and fears to welcome in a consistent flow of clients. Yeah. Um, so I'm happy to guide you there. Besides this feel the heal exercise, the questions around the business in terms of what's what is what feels your highest leap what feels your most expansive leap which is the book sticking in the yeah. zone of genius in terms of conversations right yeah. then 
coupling that with a niche, a more specific niche with a person, a problem and an outcome transformation, that's going to give you a really compelling message. It's going to give you a, and it's going to give you a compelling call to action because you know who you're talking to and what they want. Yeah. And then from that, you can create content and create offers and create, you know, zoom calls or collaborations or whatever. That's going to help them. That's going to add value to them in a way that also builds demand and desire for your program, your book, whatever offer you have next. Yeah. And that's when you start to find yourself once again, being you getting paid for just being you building a yeah. business by, by, by just being you and swearing all you want, yeah. whatever it may be. <laughs> right. How's yeah. that feel? Yeah. Obviously that, that resonates. It's very much in line with what I want to do. Um, yeah, it feels good. It feels in alignment with, with my approach to keeping it simple, keeping it, you know, in, in the space of ease and flow and simplicity and authenticity, it feels natural, right? Beautiful. Awesome. So they're the questions I have for you. Um, there's only so much we can do in this sort of time, but that'll give, that'll give a lot of momentum. The more you yeah. ask those questions, the more in depth you go. I'm happy for you to send me a message in a couple of days and, let, and we could go back and forth and brainstorm yeah. a couple of ideas. Um, before we finish up, let people know where they can contact you. If they'd like to get to know you a bit more, collaborate, yeah. add you to their network, where can they find you? Uh, I am on all, most of the social media platforms, but the best place to find me is on Facebook. I find it easiest to do like the connection one-to-one -one relationship building. I don't know why that is. It's just, I'm drawn to it. I don't know. It's, it feels more of a collaborative space. Whereas some of the other platforms feel like it's harder to build that relationship. I think it's maybe the groups and the, the ability to interact a little bit more freely on Facebook. So I absolutely totally find me on Facebook, hop in my DMS, send me a message. If it feels like a fit to collaborate, or chat or just connect and just have a conversation. I love that stuff. So definitely reach out. You can find my page by going to coachchristyholt.com. That will link you right to my Facebook profile just for simplicity. I look forward to making some new connections, hopefully from this and mm -hmm. just learning what more people are doing out there. And I think that as we come together, our message, our message gets louder and then we can help more people. So beautiful amazing thanks for being on here and thanks for uh just thanks for just sharing what you have going on and and hopefully this offers a lot of value to people i'll put all the links below uh okay. wherever this is posted just for just for ease of of reaching out to you but yeah anyone be lucky to have you in the network you clearly have a passion have a an an inspiring mission and that's what we need more of so thanks for being honest and vulnerable and and just uh, just being of service. Is there is there anything else you feel called to add or feel called to share before we finish up here? Nothing really popping out to me. I, I love conversations. So whatever that looks like, if you know, if you think that maybe there's a fit for a podcast conversation, I would I would love to chat about what that would be like. Uh, but really any conversation. Just love to love to connect and hear what different people are doing. So awesome. yeah, just reach out. Love to connect. Beautiful. Thanks for being here. Everyone yeah. connect with Christy and uh, thanks for being here. Yeah. Thanks so much, Jason.